Howdy, I'm Andrew Monaco, and welcome to this edition of Ford Ride Along. We are in a 2019 Expedition Stealth by Ford, and this is one elite vehicle. And if you have an elite vehicle like this, you have to have an elite head coach for an elite program, and that's exactly what we have for you today. We are with Coach G of the Texas A&M Women's Soccer, maybe the best program in the country, and he's with us, so come on along this Ford Ride Along with me and with Coach G. Howdy, Coach. Howdy, howdy. It is great to be with you. Great to, great to oh, be with you. And this is a nice ride. Yeah, this is a nice ride. Is, but here's the it? thing. We don't normally take questions. Like, this isn't a talk show like that way. Okay. But there is a question to get us started from a, from a Gary Blair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew that was going to be your reaction. He said, are you like Pele, Ronaldo, Messi, Except you're just G. It's just Coach G. He said, at least I have to put GB. You're just Coach G. Does that make you more special? Um, it just makes me a little bit easier on the Texas tongue is all it is. It's, uh, you know, because I, I, I'm my initials, I'm three Gs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with, uh, with a name like Guerreri and growing up in, uh, in North Texas, it was just a lot easier on, on folks instead of being called, you know, Gorilla and all the other things. It just, Guerreri was, was a little too difficult. I called it an elite program and an elite coach. That's not the way it was in the beginning. You built this thing from scratch. Right. How does that preparation and now your preparation now, how much pride do you have knowing where you are now and still strive for even greater things because that's the drive that you have. But talk about the early days for all of this. Well... You know, there was a program in place. It was, uh, but it was it was a non-scholarship program. It's what they called a varsity two program in, in those days. And uh, you know, John David Crow hired me in uh, in '93, and you know, he he was the one that said, you know, we're going all in on this. We're mm -hmm. gonna we're not just gonna put a bandaid on this and say that we have a women's sports team. I was hired in March. I started in May. And we started training camp in August. That's how fast everything went with, four, like I said, 14 new freshmen. So um, we got right after. I said, I've always said that the goal I have for the players is I want them to have a good time. I want them to, to really enjoy themselves. But it's a heck of a lot more fun to win. And so we're going to do everything we possibly can to win. Yeah. And uh, you know, we went 15-3 and won that first year. And, and we haven't looked back since. 15-3 and 1. And when I, when, and here's the reason for folks to know why I say elite. One of the programs, every single tournament time, A&M's been a part of it. You know yeah. nothing but postseason success. And that not every school can say that. Well, and and it's obviously we have a, we're hugely uh, proud of that. Um, it's one of the things that keeps, you know, really keeps the, the former players engaged because that's something that they started and that, that they continued and that uh, when players come to Texas A&M, they don't come here for a dream of being able to play in the NCAA tournament. That's expected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's expected that we're going to be competing for another conference championship, that we're going to be, you know, in the top 10. You know, we've been ranked in the national top 10 every year since 1995. There's 335 teams in NCAA Division One, so, uh, we take a lot of pride in the consistency of the program. Bates. Under left foot, Bates across, and it's in! It's another late goal for the Aggies! Great goal by Emily Bates to be the difference maker in this game. Uh, you shared uh, probably as personal a story as anybody can share. <laughs> Your uh, family's an extended family, for lack of a better phrase, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you know, my, my family is bigger than I ever knew it was. Uh, you know, I was, for, for those who don't know my story, I was... I was adopted as a, as an infant and in Chicago, um, my birth mother uh, gave me up and gave me the opportunity to uh, to live a better life. And um, so, you know, I was adopted by uh, Jerry and, and Kay Guerreri in in the greater Chicago land area, and we moved to Texas in 1971. Um, I grew up in Richardson. Um, I went to high school with with my wife. 
Um, although we never dated when, when we were in high school because she was way out of my league. I mean, Andrew, way out of my league. <laughs> well, we didn't start dating until uh, after our 10-year reunion. We oh. met up in our 10-year reunion, and I grew up a little bit in those, those 10 years. Yeah. I filled out a little bit in those 10 years. And uh, so we, we uh, that was in 91. Um, I proposed in uh, on New Year's Eve of 91. Mm. And we got married New Year's Eve the next the next year, in New Year's Eve in '92. I interviewed for the job at A&M in March of '93. Terry is an Aggie, mm-hmm. and I think that's how I got the job. Gotcha. The whole issue of wow. Aggies taking care of Aggies. Yep. You know, I had 12 Aggies on my re- my reference list, <laughs> and um, well, fast forward now many years, and uh, she. Uh, I'd always known that I was adopted, yeah. and but I never knew who who my birth mother was. I never mm-hmm. knew much of anything, and something comes up, and we and, sh- and Terry's like, "Do you mind if I do some digging on on this?" And I never, I never really wanted to find out who my birth mother was while my while my mom was still alive. Gotcha. Because I didn't I didn't want I didn't, never wanted to think that I wasn't happy about the way right. I was raised and the right. life I've had as as a, as a Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Well, she she passed away in 2001, so so I said, sure. I mean, I, I, I'd love to know. I'd love to know my genetics. I'd sure. love to know family history, right. medical history, all those right. things. Do I have a brother? Mm-hmm. Do I have a sister? Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, Terry's a lot smarter than I am, too, and she, you know, started digging, uh, got into the wormhole of, of the internet, dug and dug and dug, and finally um, finds uh, my birth mother mm-hmm. in a l- little bitty town in southern Indiana mm. and uh, she reaches out to her confirms that that she is who she is and uh, I, I I call on actually on Mother's Day and it's the first contact I'd ever had wow. with her wow. and you know she's a really sweet woman and of course I was I was always afraid of all the all the bad. You know, right, like, is she dead? Right, uh, is 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 she in jail? Is she this? Mm-hmm. Is she that? You know, I've carved out a good life for my kids. Mm-hmm. You know, what could happen? And um, and 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 it all became ridiculous because she's she's a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. I, she never never married. Um, I don't have any any siblings. Yeah, and uh, so we're like, you know, you've got three grandkids. We'd I'd love wow. to bring them, bring them to to meet you. Yeah. So the next spring break. We uh, flew the kids to Louisville, you know, went over the Ohio River up into southern Indiana, and we're there, and we're around this family, you know, all the, it's a big family gathering, and it's the first time I'd ever been around family that looked like me. <laughs> <laughs> all the Guerreros are like really? five foot four, great head of hair, you know, and uh, you know, my my dad always used to laugh, you know, tall milk tall milkman, what he would right. say. <laughs> But anyway, so going through, and uh, my uncle is the one who, he's like, well, you know, it's the craziest thing. He goes, none of us ever knew you existed. He goes, it was a secret that Beth and my father had, and he took that he took that secret to his grave. He never told my mother. And he's telling me this while we're walking through this little town, Mitchell, Indiana, with, like, no stoplights. Yeah. It's, you know, small town. It's probably a quarter of the size of Navasota down to the south here. And uh, he goes, you know, I could never figure that out because my parents were so close and mm-hmm. they, they shared everything. He goes, and then it hit, it hit me. He goes, if my mother had known, she would have raised you right here in Mitchell. And so mm. I'm like, you know, that was my kind of, it's a great, it's a wonderful life moment. Yes. My Bedford Falls moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, it took the breath, it took my breath away and I was like, so I started looking around and I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know. So, if I'm raised here, number one, I never played soccer. Right. Um, I never, I never met my wife. Right. I don't have my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I never have this career. I never right. come to Texas A and M. Right. I don't come to Texas A and M. My staff doesn't come to Texas A and M. So, for me, it's just you know, just it's just confirmed what a blessed life I've had yeah. and how, you know, that one really unselfish decision that she made. 55 years ago mm-hmm. um, 
that I didn't understand, you know, right. and for me, I thought that I'd, I'd been abandoned and instead of I'd been given this, this incredible opportunity, you really this, this great, yeah, right. how much I was loved that she mm -hmm. allowed, allowed this to happen. Right. And uh, so it's been, it's just, it's reaffirmed that I'm in the right place, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. God has got this planned for me and, and the people that, I, that I'm around that he's blessed this path. And so right. what we do is the right thing. And, uh, and what a great place to be, right. to be doing the right thing. Right.